Welcome back to Ride JBI. This is JB. This is an update video on our continuous improvement series of our JBI suspension WP linkage shock on the 2023 KTM models. We've done a few different shock testing um, since the new 23s came out and uh, we've had some good results so far, but mainly we've been focused on the forks for the past year and a half. We've done a lot of fork testing and we've shared a lot of that with you guys. Um, in our videos. What we haven't done is we haven't done the equal amount of shock testing. Reason being was the forks is what really stuck out on the bike as the area that needed the most improvement. So we really focused on that area. And now I'm really pleased with the settings we've come up with for our air forks, our WP exact pro or exact cone forks, whatever you want to go for that cartridge series. We've got great settings for that. And also the KYBs. The shocks were working pretty good right out of the box. So it wasn't an area that really needed a lot of focus, but there's still potential there. So, so far we've done two different, let's say revisions on the shock. What I mean by that is we came out with our original first revalve attempt. We adjusted that once and now we're on revision two. And that's what we've been selling to the public and we've had some very good feedback on. Right now I'm about to work on our other shock. This is our other demo shock. We're gonna take it apart and make a few adjustments to the valving. This would be revision three. Just because we're doing this does not mean we're actually gonna sell this or this would be a better setting. It just means this is gonna be something else that we're gonna try. And it's fun for us to document that process with you so you can follow along as we do that. If you wanna come on forward, I'll show you what we're working with so far on the shock. So this is WP's latest linkage shock. It's the Gen 3. It came out on the 2023 models. So far what we've done is we've done a DLC coat on the shock shaft, our JBI bladder kit, and also the X-Trig preload adjuster. Of course, there's a JBI spec valving on the pistons, on the shock absorber, and that is to our motocross spec right now. So we're gonna update that valving today, and we're also going to install this new KTEC shock body tube. KTEC is now offering complete shock body tubes that are already Kashima coated. With that in mind, we got one from them so we can try it out for ourselves. Sounds like a good option, so that way we don't have to send out your own personal parts and have that long lead time to wait for parts to come back Kashima coated. This will be fun for us to try two different things. I'm gonna minorly adjust the valve in here so nothing too crazy, but we're also gonna put on this tube. It'll be fun to see how much of a difference there is between how this shock performs and the current shock we have on our bike that we're selling. Will it be a big difference, a minor difference, or just very small and not noticed at all? That'll be something we'll get to test and find out. And then what we can do, depending on the results we get, we can adjust the other shock to be more similar to this one, but without the same exact coatings and features, and then start to deduce exactly what changes caused what, and also how effective such coatings are. I myself already have experience utilizing coatings and how much of an influence it can or cannot have over the valving. Before we get too far, is there any mm -hmm. difference between the OEM shock body tube and the KTEC Kashima coated shock body tube? Um, good question, man. So dimensional wise, so I mean by like the overall design of the tube is identical to the OEM. The key feature is gonna be the Kashima coating, which we can see on the tube itself. And again, the main reason for that is improving the surface finish on the inside of the tube. This tube, think of that as your engine cylinder. So we have your main piston and it's gonna slide up and down this bore very often as you ride. So the better we can improve the surface finish on the inside of this tube, theoretically, the better that this is going to seal and also operate under less friction and make the shock more sensitive for that. So we've already know that Kashima works well. I think KTEX probably got a home run on their hands already because they're just combining an already good design shock body with a better coating on it being Kashima coat. So logically, I think this is just gonna be a really nice update to the shock and it'll go well with the DLC coat we have on there and also the bladder kit. All items that reduced friction in comparison to the stock shock. Good bleed on our vacuum machine, man. And then we're gonna clean out inside of our <clears throat> seal head area before we try to extract this out the cylinder because any dirt or debris in there 
is going to be very counterproductive on us removing this seal head. So not a lot of time on this shot because you can see the oil is still pretty clear. But we did enough testing time to know that the setting in this one wasn't as favored as the other setting. So this shock's been sitting in the drawer for a little while. That's why I'm very excited to be taking it apart again and to be putting in some new settings to uh, do some more testing. Because one thing I have learned is the more effort you put in, the better the results. And we are always more than happy to put in effort here at Rad JBI. So right now we're removing the clickers from the compression assembly. So that way we can remove the compression adjuster assembly and make some adjustments to the valving and possibly to some other parts of the hardware in there as well. Just look at that, another tool, or a tool by K-Tech. We utilize a lot of their springs here at Ride JBI. Um, all their springs are true to length, so if the OEM spring is a certain length, their springs are gonna match that exactly. And all their springs are polished and laser marked. And uh, one thing over the years I've really come to appreciate well-made and well-manufactured springs. So for Rad GBI, we've been a big purchaser of their stuff for a good couple of years now. And as of lately, we've been kind of branching out and trying a few other of their products, uh, that Kashima tube for one of them, and then some of their tooling uh, as well. We're not affiliated with them in any way. We're, we buy parts from them, but we're not an affiliate. But I uh, just wanted to recognize that that is another good company, making some really good parts, products, and tooling. Here's a compression adjuster. We're gonna make some adjustments to this bad boy as well to go along with our valving also. All right, so we got this draining over here. Time to take off the valving from the main piston so we, that way we can modify that. With this being the third iteration of the setting for the 23 and newer KTM Husky gas gas platform bikes, what are you looking to achieve? For this one, I'm kind of being greedy. What do I mean by that is I hope with this setting we're gonna try, the shock is more comfortable. By that I mean, when you go into corners and come out of corners, there's often a lot of small to medium stutter bumps or consecutive bumps. And when suspension's too firm, you really feel that area, in that area. The riders get really beat up. So I'm hoping we can continue along the path that we've gotten so far in terms of improving the comfort of the shock. That's really the main focus of these updates. And the reason I say I'm being greedy is because I'm also gonna try to valve it in a way or make some changes to where we also get a little more bottoming out of it. And that's why I say I'm being greedy. It's hard to ask for both of those. By that, I mean improve the comfort of the shock and also make it have better bottom. And usually those are pretty mutually exclusive of each other, meaning if you gain one, such as bottoming resistance, you're going to lose comfort or vice versa. That's not always the case, but at a certain point, that compromise or limit comes up. I don't think we're at that limit yet, in terms of the shock absorber and its design and what we tried so far. So that's why we're gonna just try some new stuff. I'm really pumped with what we have now, but you know, we don't know the limit until we try. So we're gonna throw in some new settings, a little bit of new hardware as well, see how that stuff works. And um, kind of regardless of how that works, we're gonna try something else right again after that and keep filming it. But I am confident at some point we will, we will have some marginal or big improvement over the settings we have now. Yeah, so I'm gonna keep taking this apart. We got a lot more work to do, and um, we'll tune you guys back in once we're getting it back together and on the bleed machine, and before we go at it.